Okay. Well, I'm going to go ahead and get started. I'll introduce myself. Yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, so I'm Aileen Buckley. I work at Esri. I, um, my title there is a research cartographer. Uh, sort of what I do is to develop best practices for cartography with our platform and then try to share them with you guys. So what I want to talk about today is something that uh, my team has been working on. I'm on the Living Atlas team. We've been working on this for a while and it was released this year. It's still in beta, but I want to demonstrate it for you. It's called the Vector Tile Style Editor. So first I'll show you how to get to it. You can go to the livingatlas.arcgis.com website and just type in vector tile style and then there's the editor. And it is an item on ArcGIS Online. It's an application on ArcGIS Online. So when it comes up here, you can just click this. It will take you to ArcGIS Online, and this is the item description. And you can either open the application from the thumbnail or from the link on the right. So we'll go ahead and open that, and you're prompted to get started. So you click OK. And the first thing you need to do is choose the style that you want to edit. So it behooves you to find the style that's closest to what you want to start with or what you want to end up with so that you don't have to make so many changes. But we've also grouped our um, vector tile base maps into a series of tabs at the top, the most popular ones, some of our creative ones. Our bases and references, they're making uh, what we call a map sandwich, so you have a base on the bottom and reference information on the top, generally labels and some line work. Uh, all base maps, and then once you create your own styles using the editor, you can uh, access them through the last tab on this page here. So we're going to choose one of the popular ones. Uh, and you'll notice that I was prompted to sign in. And you do not have to sign in unless you want to save your style. And you can save, when you go to save, you can then sign in. So you can play around, anybody can play around with this at this point. OK, so we're going to use the street map. And um, I'm just going to say select style. And I just want to explain the interface first. Over here in this big blank area at this point will be a set of the map, the uh, map that we're working with. And let me see if I can refresh that. And it will have um, a main map view and some smaller map views that um, will give you some close-ups of areas at different scales or zoomed out at different scales. And then on the left side here, on the other, on, uh, along the edge, um, you can change the style that you're working with. You can go into quick edit mode, which I'll demonstrate for you. You can edit any one of the layers individually. You can edit by color. You can save, reset the style, undo, redo, and then leave feedback for us if you have some suggestions or you run into any problems. So let's take a look first at the quick edit pane. Um, I can change, in the quick edit pane, what we've done is sort of grouped a whole lot of features that have the, the same symbology. So here, instead of using this color for land, I may want to choose a slightly different color. Um, I can choose about the same uh, saturation, let me say hue, I can choose a different hue. But maybe I want to have a different saturation or value. And um, so I can just pick the same hue. It'll have the same saturation value. I can pick it from the color picker here. Um, or I can pick tints down here and shades. I can also, if I know the definition of the color, I can specify it as um, either RGB, hex, or HSV, HSL. And then I can just select Done. What will happen is that the entire map will update. And once I click Apply Colors, and show that new um, bit of styling that I've set in. I'm just going to change nature right now to a little bit darker. So and to, do, to do that, I'm just, and I really like this option, because a lot of times when I'm fi figuring out colors, I want to just change a little bit about the value and saturation, but not the hue. So I'm just going to pick something that's a little darker, click Done, and apply those colors. 
Okay, so now I've changed um, the land and the nature areas on this base map. Uh, I'm gonna work with water next. Uh, notice that the water has bathymetric information about it. They're just layers, they're basically um, layer tints for different levels of bathymetry. So when I click this and I choose a darker blue and I say done and apply the colors, that bathymetry will still be reflected. It's just ramping the colors that I've chosen. Um, so there's that. Roads, when I choose a new color for roads, I'm gonna pick a lighter color for these. Let's go with um, this pink here and um, click done. If you look at this uh, bottom right hand pane and I zoom in, one, thing's, one thing that happens with roads is we keep the casing on the road, so whatever color you choose, we give um, you a casing color that's related to the color that you've chosen. Similarly to buildings where I'm just gonna pick a lighter gray and um, say done and apply the colors. When I pick the buildings, one of the things that we've done with our buildings at some levels is to put um, a little shadow in there. And again, the shadow will be related to the color that you choose for the buildings. So quick edit style gives you the ability to change a lot of stuff very quickly on the map. Um, and also to keep related elements of certain features like the casings for the roads and the shadows for the buildings. Okay. Um, uh, I'll just go through the rest of this here. You cannot recolor the icons and the patterns until you save this style, then this will become available to me. So let me just skip over that for right now. When I use selected colors, um, for the labels, they're, they're trying to pick the colors based on the map. So if I wanted to use these colors to label these features, then I use this option to use the selected colors. If I want to change them myself, I'm going to pick the label colors. And the label contrast uh, is just a lightness, darkness of the label itself on the map, I've chosen it to sort of be really low right now. So if you look at these labels in Africa, for example, they're pretty um, difficult to read against the background. So I'll pick the high contrast or maximum contrast one and it sort of pushes that contrast a little higher. Okay. All right, down here towards the bottom, uh, I can also change all the fonts on the map. So I'm gonna scroll down here to Syncop Synca something, Syncopit, Syncopate. And I'll say done, and I'll say replace all, and you'll notice that the, uh, the text on the map will change to that style, and it will keep any of the formatting of those styles within any one of the groups. So um, uh, we had a, you know, sort of a bold style here and a light style there. All that stuff is just replaced by a single font down here. If I wanna make all the labels on the, font, on the map a little larger, I can click larger. If I wanna make them all smaller, I click smaller. Um, if I want to look down here in this bat bottom window here, if I wanna make all of the roads a little bit narrower, a little bit wider, I do that with one click of a button down here. Okay, so I've just made them wider, I've made the text bigger, hopefully you can see some of those changes. Um, okay. All right. Um, if, if you find one of the base maps that you think is pretty decent, and you just wanna play around, see what the options are, you can click this randomize button here. And when you find something that you think might be okay, you can click apply colors, and then you can see what you've got, and keep randomizing until you think you might have something that makes sense. And if it doesn't, just go back to quick editing. Um, again, Right now I've got use selected colors for these labels so you can see that this text right here is green on top of a green background, blue on top of a blue background. I can just change that to use my own uh, label colors if I want to. 
Alrighty, and then at this point, I'm just going to choose a different map. I'm gonna use the charted territory map, which is sort of like um, a wall map from a, a, a children's school wall map, um, and we'll just use that. I'm gonna randomize this. Yuck, but we'll see what happens. Horrible. But now, let's say I do want to change something in here. Let's say, say, oh, I'm sorry. Let me go to edit layers. Now I have the opportunity to change any feature that I'm looking for, any feature that I'm working with. Um, and you can see that the colors for each country are, are now being sort of randomized within that green hue. Uh, I could change any one of those or uh, any of the other sorts of features that are on the map. Um, I can also change the scale range for different things. Any one of these uh, features, any one of these um, categories can be changed in terms of scale range. If I don't want something to show up at a scale range, the best way to do it is just to simply change the color to no color. In fact, it's the only way to do it. So if you want something not to show, just turn off the visibility for that, either, either using the scale range or by setting color to no color. Okay, um, I want to show you one quick thing about this text here. This is such a horrible map, but when you randomize, you never know what you're going to get. So I'm just going to pick this text right here by clicking on the map, and now uh, you can see that I have administration zero, um, and it's not the text, actually. Let's see if I can get the text. Oh, yeah, it is. See, right here? Okay, so for Canada, um, you can see I have different scale levels. If I wanted to add a scale level, I could add a scale level in. I can delete a scale level, or I can use, with this little gear thing, a single value for a single scale level. Um, also, this is kind of awesome. Um, I'm going to use zoom levels here. I'm just going to go from, say, 1 to 4. The first one I'll set at pink, and the second one I'll set to red. No, not red, blue. Okay. Oh, yeah, come on, you, red, done. You, blue, done. Now, um, when I zoom in or out, the text is going to change. Now, I only have two of them on here right now, but you can see it sort of changed. Oh, somehow it didn't, didn't capture it. Um, but if I have three uh, different colors, or if I have two different colors or three different colors, one thing that will happen is as I'm zooming in and out, the color will actually tween between those two colors. So if I pick yellow and green, it will tween between those two. Okay, let's say I like this. Oh, um, if I want to go back to the very beginning, start over with that style altogether, I click Reset Style. I can undo any step, and I can redo any step. But if I want to save that, then I'm going to sign in to my ArcGIS Online account, and um, then I can name it and save the style. What this means, then, is that I can go to my content, on ArcGIS.com, and I will just refresh that. And there is a content item that is this style. From here, I can add it to a map, I can add it to Pro, I can um, add it to any of the apps that we have, but I can also take a look at the style which, of course, that's just the JSON file. I could download that style, and if I do, I end up with um, the same kind of content, but you can use like a, a JSON parser like JSON lint or something like that to actually make it look like something you can edit. And if I want to make my edits in the JSON file and I want to save them and I want to use that to render my base map, then I click Update. I choose that JSON file that I just edited, 
and then I update the style file. When that base map displays, it will have my new styling associated with it. So to end quickly, I wanted to point out that there is a nice webinar that we did recently, just in September. Just look for Esri webinar, custom base map webinar. Um, but also, I uploaded to SlideShare, I just go to slideshare.net, search for my name, and there is this, um, uh, there's this PowerPoint in there that just has some resources for you. So you can get a link directly to the style editor, posts about it, there's that web webinar, et cetera, et cetera. So there's some resources for you there. Um, there's more I could demo, but um, we have a strict 12 minute limit, so I'm gonna stop there and just ask if you have any questions. Any questions for Eileen? In the front, from Katie. I swear I don't get first pick of questions. Uh, Eileen, can you expand a bit how the auto contrast of labels work? Because um, I noticed on some color schemes where you did um, select, like based off of the base map colors and quick edit, does that automatically generate each time? Yes, Dep yes. Depending on what you've chosen to, to set as the background, those labels will um, it's sort of built into the logic of the mm -hmm. app, how it will change that contrast. That was very interesting. Thank yeah. you. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Any other questions? We have time for one more. How many people have used this already? Okay, cool. It's really good for those of us who work exclusively in ArcGIS. So. Yes, and no coding. No coding. Good for me. Thank you, Amy. Okay.